need to do a quick sound check um because i'm not seeing any comments i don't know if facebook is going to load our comments or not so tell me what you had for breakfast this morning if you're watching tell me what you had for breakfast this morning that will tell me that a you can hear me and then b that i could see the comments coming up you know Facebook is always making changes, likes to keep us on our toes. So um, I always gotta be doing some testing to make sure that everything is working and going according to plan. Hey, we got the sunshine coming in the window again today. That's nice after all of the rain that we've had. Um, and I am going to Say a little something about that um, and the rain very shortly. Anywho, we are here for STEM 102. Abby is here. Hi, Abby. Can you hear me? Can you tell me? Um, oh, bananas and caramel and whipped cream. <sighs> yummy, yummy in my tummy. That sounds delicious. Um, that sounds like a dessert almost. So good. So we are here for STEM 102, a follow-up to STEM 101 if you joined us last month. Um, and just a reminder, in addition to your kit that you got, you need a pair of scissors. You need an empty water bottle. You need a pencil, you need a glue stick, you need some tape. Some of you I have given a glue stick and tape um, either because you were new or I was unsure as to whether you have them at home. Most of you I know, you've attended my other programs in the past and I know that you have those supplies at home. And you need some kind of coloring utensils, okay. Now, today is all about flying and air. So I have a book suggestion for you. Planes for Brains. If you like things that fly and um, you like making paper airplanes, this is the book for you. It tells you how to fold all kinds of paper airplanes. And I have made some pretty good paper airplanes out of this book. And it shows you step by step on how to do it. Um, so I suggest there's even a DVD video included, which I have never even watched before. So that might also be helpful. Um, and if you like doing science projects, which I'm guessing you do, otherwise you wouldn't be joining me, I recommend this book of science things to make and do. I know it's backwards for you. Um, a lot of the activities that I have done um, for STEM 101 and for some of these, um, STEM 102, came out of this book. Um, and I have done a lot of, the, I should say, a lot of these activities just in the past um like we have made catapults before maybe not like this but similar um what else have i done in here let's see oh i've done this um i've done actually a lot yeah i've done this that's pretty cool painting with um tea or coffee um We've done fingerprints, fun. Um, so it's all in color and um, there's a lot of fun, exciting things to do in there. And it kind of tells you the science behind it as well, which is the whole point. Um, okay, so I am going to point my camera down so we can unpack our kit and get started with what we're doing. If you're joining us late, I asked everyone to tell me what they had for breakfast. Let's see. Um, let me try and 
Move that up just a little bit, maybe. Grab my chair. Okay, that is good. All right, so let me push all this stuff. Hmm, actually, I can't even see the... Let's zoom forward a little bit so you can see closer to the edge of my table. Okay, uh, let me put this stuff out of the way. With this tripod on the table and the stand to hold my computer, my actual workspace is very limited. Okay, so let's unpack your kit. Very simple things that are in this kit, in this bag. Um, a straw and three pieces of paper held together by a paper clip. Now the paper clip is not just to hold the paper. We actually do need the paper clip, so keep track of that. You've got one long piece of paper with a pencil line down the middle. You've got a little square piece of paper, and then you've got a like bigger, fatter rectangle. Okay, so the first thing we are going to make is our helicopter whirly gig. Now, I don't know if Abigail is the only one that's joining me today live, but I know that at some point, Brooke and Anna and Lexi and Hazel and Hugh and Chase and Natalie will watch this video. So I want to say hi to all of you. Here is our helicopter whirly gig. This is what we are going to make. For this project, you need this strip of paper with the line down the middle so you can put the other two pieces of paper to the side. You do need your paper clip as you can see right there. Um, you'll need a pencil to draw another line and you will need your scissors to cut. The first thing that we are going to do, we want to fold the top down and we want to fold the top third down. Well, how do we find the thirds? Well, thirds means that whatever we have, whatever we're working with, is divided into three equal parts. When you divide it in half, you divide it right down the middle. We want to divide it into thirds. Now, you could always measure. If you had a ruler at hand, on hand, you can measure the strip of paper and know that it is eight inches. So if we were to divide eight by three, it would give us just a little more than two and a half inches. So you could always measure two and a half inches down and fold. Here, we're just going to guess. If you fold the top of your paper down, you wanna fold it till it looks like the edge, the top, is right in the middle of what's left of the paper. So I'm going to say that this looks like it's right in the middle. The edge of my top is right there. And this piece up here looks to be about the same as this piece down here. So I'm going to guess that that is approximately one third that I folded down. Because the second third is underneath this flap and the third third is what's left down here. Okay, so we folded the top of our paper down. The top third of our paper down. And that's all. We're going to unfold again and we are going to cut that flap that we just folded. We're going to cut on the line that I have drawn for you. That line that goes right down the middle. And you're going to stop at the fold. So just the top flap that we folded, you're going to cut. So you're not gonna cut the two thirds that are down here. You're just going to cut the top third that's up there, right on the line. So that you have two skinny pieces of paper. Okay? So, step one, done. Step two, done. Now, step three. We are going to draw a line across the paper and we're going to go just below the fold, about a quarter of an inch. How big is a quarter of an inch if you don't have a ruler? Well, I'm going to show you. I have a sample right here. I'm going to undo my sample and 
I'm going to show you what about a quarter of an inch looks like. If the sun, oh my good heavens, I'm going to block it with my other hand. So there you go. You see the fold up here, and then you see the line that I drew underneath. Just a little ways underneath, about a quarter of an inch. We're going to do that on ours right here. Now I'm going to turn mine around just so I can draw it with my right hand here. And you don't have to use a ruler. You just want to make it semi-straight. It's okay if it's not perfect. But you're going to have something that looks... Oh, let me block the sun again. Hold on, where was it? Oh, oh, oh. oh my gosh, there we go. Nope, that's not it either. A line, a quarter inch down from the fold. Okay? Everybody with me? Don't pay attention to my polish. I've got like three fingers that are painted because I forgot to do them today. Um, now, the next thing is to, when maybe you saw it on my sample here, is we are going to make two dots. Where are we going to put the dots? Well, the dots are gonna go on the line that we drew. Well, where on the line that we drew are these dots gonna go? I want you to put a dot on the line you just drew, halfway between the edge and that middle line that I have drawn for you. So, taking one side at a time, try to guess the halfway point between your edge right here and the line down the middle. What's the halfway point? Take a guess and put a little dot on the line there. Doesn't have to be perfect, just like that. And then we're gonna do the same thing on this side too. A little dot about halfway so now you have a line with two dots, kind of looks like a face, and imagine it's looking at you. And what we're going to do is use our scissors to cut on the line to the dot from each edge. So from this edge on the line to the dot, from this edge on the line to the dot. Oh, the sun went in. little snip on that side, a little snip on this side. And what that allows you to do is to now fold the edges of our paper in like this. How far do you know how to fold it? Well, it's only going to go in so far because of where you cut. So the fold should be right where the dot is and this outer edge of your paper should really line up with the center line that I have drawn for you. So you're going to fold both of those edges in to meet the center, just like that. Here's where I'm going to do it. you with me? Anybody have any questions? Need to see anything? Again, hear any instructions again? Do not hesitate to ask. I will go over it with you. When you fold that little handle in to the center, now you have this kind of spatula looking of paper, right? We're not doing origami, but it's kind of like it. The next thing that we're going to do is fold that bottom edge, the handle of the spatula, up to the line that we drew. The bottom edge, come 
comes up to the line that we drew. And you want to crease everything well. Yes, everything is going well for Abigail. That's what I like to hear. Okay, now we're gonna put our paper clip on the bottom to hold that little flap up, that paper clip that I gave you. We're gonna put that on the bottom. And what you're going to do is take your blades up here and you're gonna fold the left blade toward you. And you're gonna fold the right blade away from you to the back right on that fold that we folded the first time. So now we've got our helicopter blades. And the question is, what will happen when we drop this to the ground? Now, if I drop it right from here, it really doesn't have that far to fall. So you may not be able to see on camera what it does, but you try it at home. Just stand up, hold your arm out in front of you, Drop it to the floor, not to the table. See, because mine, I could demonstrate very little for you. But you see that it spins. You'll get a more dramatic effect when you drop it to the floor. Okay, so why? What did you, ask, what did you answer, first of all, what will happen? And why? Well, there is an invisible force, number one, that is pulling it to the ground. Do you know what that is? It is in fact gravity. Gravity is the force that attracts all things to the center of the earth. The earth is round in the center. Everything is attracted to the center of the earth. That is gravity. Now, why does it spin instead of dropping straight down? I don't get much of a spin because the drop is not that big. If I hold it a little bit higher, I can get some of a spin. Um, well, the reason is being that these blades, as the helicopter falls, each blade hits the air, but forces the air to come out of one side. The air comes out on this side. The air comes out on this side. They're moving in opposite directions. And so that's causing the helicopter to spin. It also slows down its fall. Because if you were to drop it like this, with no blades, it would fall much faster. It would not spin. Yes, it spins, good, Abby got it spinning. Okay, so now this is again where I introduce to you the scientific method. We talked about this last month. Um, if you're new to us, look at, I think, does that, this one's right for you. Look, I had to print it, I had to print it um, backwards. This was the one I showed you last week, which looks, I could read it to myself. But this one, I printed it out backwards so that you can read it now. So, we talked about this last month. As a reminder, or if you are new to us this month, the scientific method is a procedure that is considered very necessary for doing scientific investigation. Now it has basic parts, question, the hypothesis, the experiment, um, the observations, the measuring of the data, and the conclusion. And then you start all over again and it goes in a big circle. So all of our experiments start with a question. Our question today was what would happen when we drop the whirly gig to the floor, the helicopter whirly goes, what would happen? Well, we would say, I think this is going to happen. I think it's going to fall to the ground. That would be our hypothesis, kind of what we think is going to happen without really knowing, just our educated guess. So then we conduct the experiment like we did. We actually then drop the whirly gig and we observe what happens. 
we measure any data, we compare that to our hypothesis, did what we think really happen when we did the experiment, and then we come to a conclusion. And our conclusion is now our new answer to the question that we asked based on all of this information here, the experiment, the observation, and the data. Now, what if we changed some things? What if we removed the paper clip? What if we changed the directions of the blades and did it this way instead? What if we used thicker or thinner paper? What if we change the size of the paper clip? Instead of using this small one, maybe I put this big giant paper clip on here. What if we threw it up to the sky first or threw it out across the room like a baseball? These, all these things are called variables and variables are just parts of the experiment that can change. And when you are working with the um, scientific method, you want to change only one variable at a time. Think of it kind of like a recipe. If we had a recipe for say a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, the variables, the things that could change would be the bread, the peanut butter, the jelly. So maybe on our, instead of using plain bread, we could use um, cinnamon raisin bread, or we can put it on a hot dog bun. We could use plain peanut butter or crunchy peanut butter. The jelly that we use could change between the flavors. Grape, we could do strawberry, we could do apricot, right? There's all these different kinds of combinations, but you want to only change one at a time. So you'll make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich with regular peanut butter, grape jelly on plain bread. Then what? What variable would we change? Well, let's just change the bread. We'll keep the peanut butter and the jelly the same and change the bread. See, do we like that one better? Then maybe we'll go back to the plain bread, but we'll change the flavor of the jelly. So you get the idea. All those parts are the variables. All those things are the ones that you could, the things that you could change, but you want to change only one at a time. Okay, so that is our first experiment. Go ahead, right now, one more time, you throw it up to the air. Let's do that um, experiment. Throw it up to the ceiling and let it fall down. I just did it all off camera, and you know what? It actually spun on its way up and then spun on its way down. I would not have guessed that that would have happened. Okay, so now we are going to move on to our second one, which is the Huff and Puff Challenge. And for this, you are going to need your water bottle, the straw, and your little square piece of paper, which I have torn up and made two little small pieces. Um, let's try just making, uh, not tearing it up. Let's make a big one first. Okay, let me put my scientific method to the side. Let me put my whirly gig to the side. Let me bring out my water bottle. Okay, so the challenge is to blow the piece of paper into our water bottle. So what we're going to do is we're gonna bunch this piece of paper up into a small ball. Small paper ball. We're gonna lay the bottle on its side and we're gonna place the little paper ball in its mouth, just like this and I'm gonna put the paper ball, resting it right there. You can see it's even like sticking out a little bit. I'm gonna take my straw and I'm going to point it towards the mouth of the bottle. Now I'm not gonna get my straw right up in there and blow in there. I'm going to just blow from up here. I'm just going to angle my straw to towards the mouth of the bottle. And the goal is to try to blow the ball of paper into the bottle. Now, mine might be too big. That's why I said, let's try it with the big one first. We're experimenting. And then the variable will be the size of the paper. We will change the variable. Okay, here I go. Oh, maybe I should hold my bottle in place. That would be good, because I don't want to blow my bottle around. Ah, oh, did you see that? It came out. Let's try it again. It came out again. It was moving around. 
It wasn't really coming out. I think it was kind of getting stuck and then it came out. Why can't we blow it into the bottle? Why is it not going in? Why is it coming out? That is the question. Hmm. Well, this has a lot to do with air pressure and air movement. Let me explain. So air pressure is the weight of the air pressing down on the earth. All right, air doesn't weigh much, but it does have a weight. And now with the paper ball resting in the mouth of the bottle, it would make sense that the air from the straw would blow it into the bottle, right? But the exact opposite happens. It comes out instead. Why? Well, the secret is inside the bottle because although we say that this bottle is empty, it's actually very full, full to the brim. What? That's impossible, right? We can't see anything. Well, you can't see the air that you breathe either, can you? Unless it's cold outside. This bottle is filled with air. And trying to blow more air into the bottle is impossible. Just like if you were to pick this bottle up and put it to your mouth and try to blow air into that bottle, it won't work, right? Because it's already full of air. So while you can't blow air into the bottle, you are definitely moving the air in the bottle around a lot as you're blowing that air through the straw. In the bottle, along the insides of the bottle, and when the air blows past the mouth of the bottle, it creates what's called an area of low pressure behind where the air goes in. Now you might hear that term a lot um, on TV during the news when the weatherman is giving the forecast. Now, this is called something very fancy called um, Bernoulli's principle. Can you say that with me? Bernoulli. So Bernoulli was, Daniel Bernoulli actually, was this mathematician and physicist that lived a long, long time ago. He was born actually in the 1700, 1700, not 01, not 02, 1700 he was born. So a really long, long time ago. Um, but he discovered that fast moving air creates an area of low pressure. So this area of low pressure is exactly what the paper ball needs to hop out of the bottle's mouth. And this area of low pressure also explains how aircrafts work, the lift of aircraft. Now, <clears throat> using the scientific method and variables, changing only one variable at a time, I am now going to try a smaller ball of paper. This is that same size that I gave you, but it's torn into two and actually not quite exactly in half because you could see one is a little bit smaller than the other. Um, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to stick it in here. Let's do it again. See if the same thing happens. Oh, I got that one in. Now it could be the angle of what I was blowing. It could be that it was just enough to push it in. Yep, from up here, it goes in. So it's not exactly, oh, see now that time it came out. So it doesn't always, um, the experiment doesn't always go the same way when you change a variable. Oh, now I can get it to sit. Um, we could also change blowing harder, blowing softer, using a marshmallow, a little piece of candy, maybe a piece of popcorn. I got it in again. See, so it always, you always change only one variable at a time and see if you get the same results. I bet you could do that as a little party trick though with like your family and tell them, I bet you can't blow it in, but you have to tell them you're not blowing directly at it. You're only blowing, you're angling the air towards the mouth of the bottle. See, now it really doesn't want to go in, but it does, it's having trouble coming out too. Okay, let's now move this one to the side. We are still gonna need our straw and our last piece of paper for our last science experiment. We are going to make paper rockets. 
This is fun. This is the most fun. This is where we get to use some of our coloring materials. Um, so first we want to decorate our paper. This is going to become a rocket. Um, the rocket is going to get rolled up into uh, a tube sort of like this. So you're not going to be able to see all of your decoration. Kind of only see like a little strip of it. So you decorate however you want while I do some talking um, because I can't remember if in your kit or not I put the flyer for summer reading um, just as a reminder that registration ends next week on Tuesday um, some of you may also if you are new got in these and just a reminder for those of you who have had them before, you're filling these up um, if you are reading, you are filling these up if you're attending programs just like this, I give you the stickers to fill them up as well. Every time you fill a row, and you could fill the row down, you could fill the row across, it's up to you. You come in and get a prize. When you fill the card, I will give you a new card. That's how that works. Um, I also have to mention that Anna is the lucky winner of our May passive program that was here in the library. Um, that was to guess the character. I had silhouettes of characters and you had to try and guess who they were. Anna is the lucky winner. So Anna, you have to come and pick out your prize. You could either come when I am here or let me know when you will be here. And if I will not be here, I will leave your prize options at the desk for you to take a look and see what it is you want to choose. So that was our May passive program. This is something new that I've done since the beginning of the year, since we were closed a lot. Um, and there wasn't like a lot to do here. I offered um, a little passive program, something to, um, you know, just have you enjoy your visit a little bit more coming to the library. Um, something else for you to do since you couldn't really sit and hang out too much or read or we don't have any of the toys out. Um, they were always on the bulletin board, but for June, I am really excited about this. It's actually gonna be for June, July, and August. I am working on an obstacle course on the sidewalk out front. Um, so, I have started it last week. It is not complete, but it's only because since I started it, either it's way too hot outside or it's raining so I am looking to complete it but it is to also promote the summer reading program so it is all animal themed because the theme of the summer reading program is tales and tales all about animals and stories and so you have to do things like um, stomp like an elephant or um, balance on the snake or um, hop like a frog or tiptoe past the sleeping owls um, things like that so I have parts of it done the parts that were in the shade the day that I was working on it because it was very very hot even in the morning um, and I was just hoping to get back out there. It looks like that maybe the rain has stopped and the sun has come out for good. Perhaps once this class is over, um, if the sun is still shining, I could get out there and do some more. So in the near future, take a trip to the library and give this obstacle course a try. I'm very excited about it. 
and I am using some chalk pens that uh, hopefully will last throughout the whole summer. It's still there even after all of this rain that we had. But I'm going to fancy it up too. The outline is just there in the chalk markers. Um, and then I think I will color it in with regular chalk because if that disappears, that's okay. The outline is still there. <clears throat> okay, are we decorating? Oh, what else I wanted to tell you was, um, I know we have some teenagers joining us for this class and there is an adult program on June 17th, which is a Thursday, that is also opened to teenagers. Um, and it is friendship bracelet making. So if you are interested in that, you can find the event on our Facebook page and get registered. It is a free class, so you don't have to worry about that. But that was just something that Miss Kendra wanted me to pass along to you um, that is available. And then after the summer reading program, like I know, Miss Summer, why are you thinking about that already? Well, I have to because we're working on the um, newsletter that's going to go out for July and August. I am doing a program that will be in-house only. Um, and it is called Wreck This Masterpiece. I'm going to give everyone a copy of a famous painting. Um, a famous art painting like the Mona Lisa, if you know what that is, or um, Whistler's mother is another one, or the girl with the pearl earring, or the scream. Um, famous paintings like that. And we are going to wreck them. Of course, they're not the original, so it's okay. We're gonna wreck them by drawing on them, coloring on them, cutting out um, magazine pictures and gluing them on them, um, you know, any way that we could turn it into something different and fun. Okay, so I am just going to finish making these stripes. And then we will continue on with making our paper racket. My orange looks brown. And I think I just wanna fill in these dots just a little bit so they stand out. And you'll have to show me a picture of what your racket looks like since I can't see it. Also, you can look for in September, STEM 103. STEM 103 will be hybrid. So we will have in-house and a virtual option as well. But I am very excited about something um, that I just came across my desk today. I hope to be getting some um, very cool STEM kits um, and September is Science September, so I'm going to be doing some um, extra STEM programming that month, um, and anything that we use with the STEM kits are definitely going to be in-house because it's going to be like robotics and paper circuits and things like that, manipulatives that we will need to have um, hands-on. So we will have more in-house programming coming soon. Okay, so we've decorated our paper, right? This is going to be our rocket. So we're going to turn it over and we're gonna put a piece, of, um, um, a strip of glue on one end of our paper. And 
then we're gonna use our pencil to kind of roll up the paper from the other end. We don't want the glue to be sticking to our pencil. This is just gonna help, the pencil is just gonna help give it the shape. It doesn't have to be really tight around the pencil. It kind of just helps you to get it curled. See, I didn't make mine really tight, but I'm having a hard time getting it to stick. Don't want to squish it too much. Um, that's because there's like nothing. <laughs> What's wrong with this glue? Hold on, let's try this again. Let me try and glue it after I've already rolled it. I think the glue was dry by the time I got my paper over there. Oop. I'm gonna stick my pencil in so I can rub it. Rub the end without it, without squishing it. Make sure it sticks. So you should have a tube with the end glued on it, glued down, just like that. And, and you could see through my tube. And what we want to do is seal the top of our rocket with the tape. So as I said, Hazel, Hugh, and Chase, you have a little piece of tape around the top of your glue stick. Um, I was pretty sure that everyone else you registered said that they had tape. So we are going to just tape the top of our rocket closed. And that's to seal it so that no air sneaks out. And that's the end of our rocket. Now we just need the launcher. What do you think we're gonna launch it with? We're gonna launch it with the same straw that we used um, for our Huff and Puff challenge. Look, we get to bend it. So this is the bendy straw. And we're going to insert our rocket right onto the long part of the straw. And then you're gonna blow. And what do you think is going to happen? Oh, did you see it fly past the camera? It went all the way across the room. I have to go get it. <laughs> this is like the best fun ever. I blew it right at the camera. Oh, that time it went on the floor again. I was trying to get it to land on the desk, but it really just flew so hard. I'll go get it again. So, why? You could keep blowing. I'll explain. While you're having fun launching rockets, you're actually learning about, here's another fancy name, Newton's third law of motion, which says every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. And Sir Isaac Newton, maybe you've heard of him because he is more famous than Daniel um, Bernoulli. Um, Sir Isaac Newton is another mathematician and physicist who was born even before Bernoulli was born. Sir Isaac Newton was born in 1643, and he's the one who discovered this, gravity. He discovered gravity, and he was a big contributor to the scientific revolution, revolution, oh my goodness, I can't talk tonight, scientific revolution. And that was just a period of time where all kinds of scientific discoveries were happening. Um, and Newton discovered a lot of them. His third um, law of motion basically just says, 
if you push an object like that, that object pushes back in the opposite direction just as hard. So as you blow into the straw, the air is forced out of the straw and goes into the rocket, right? And it pushes against the sealed end of the tube. Now the tube tries to push back. That's why you have to blow um, so hard in order to get it to launch. If it's just a light blow, see it doesn't go anywhere because the tube is actually pushing back. So you have to blow so hard in order for the force to cause the rocket to launch through the air. That's the power of air. That is Newton's third law of motion. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. And there you have it. That concludes STEM 102. I'm gonna turn my camera back up so we can look at each other again. Well, so that you can look at me and I can look at myself. <laughs> so we've got our helicopter whirly gig. See if I throw it up. There we go. It comes back down. We got we did the hop and puff challenge. You saw that. And our rocket. We had a lot of fun with these um, several years ago. We made these out of class in the library and rockets were getting stuck all over the place. People were launching them, um, but it was a lot of fun. So that's what it's all about, learning through fun. So don't forget, planes for brains, if you wanna make more things that fly. Um, science, book of science things to make and do if you like to do more science projects. There may be some more things from this book coming to all of you in September. Um, don't forget to register for summer reading. If you haven't already, you only have one more week. And that is it. I hope you guys have a good night. And I'll see you again real soon. Bye.